This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, today's video is a long one, I'm afraid, uh, so you may want to press pause now and go and put the kettle on, make yourself a cuppa, um, or wherever you are in the world, and whatever time it is, crack open the beers, um, because I've got a lot of ground to cover today, and uh, this video I've been asked for many times, basically how I use Reaper to record with. Now before we go any further, I'm just going to say that I am not, and do not claim to be, a a professional recording engineer. I'm sure if the likes of uh, Warren Hewitt or Glenn Fricker were to see what I'm doing here, they would hold their hands up in horror at some of the rookie mistakes that I'm unknowingly making and, you know, be aghast at all of the wrong moves that I'm making as I'm doing this. But what I will say is that um, the way I record is basically being the process of, a, of trial and error, experimentation over the years, and the mixes and the recordings that I uh, end up getting um, using what I'm going to show you today sound pretty good uh, on this system here to my ears they also sound pretty good on other systems that I listen to them whatever platform maybe the stereo downstairs or put them on in a car or you know have them on in my headphones as I'm out and about walking the dog and stuff like that so um, you know I don't know the, the, this it seems to work for me but if you have any um, improvements in uh, what you think I should be doing and you are experienced in such matters then please feel free to leave a civilized comment down down in the comment section. Um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to talk you through a demo that I put together for uh, this guitar here. This is one that is on loan to me. It is a PRS Custom 24SE, one of the newer ones. You can see the little toggle switches here. Um, and I wanted a piece of music that... Um, well, you know, kind of does the whole thing with the PRS is it's the best of both worlds. It's it's the best of Gibson and Fender. So I set about creating a piece of music that would put that to the test. And here's how I did it. Okay, here we are inside Reaper. And let's look at um, a couple of basic steps you have to do before you set up. I mean, first thing you need is an audio interface. I'm using the Behringer Euphoria, uh, the UMC22. Cheap and cheerful, but it, it works. Um, what you need to look for in here, if we just go to the top right hand corner of the screen in Reaper, where you've got your audio information, if you click on that, it takes you into your audio options and you can see audio system ASIO um, I think that's audio system input output is the uh, that's an acronym for and I'm using the ASIO for all version 2 driver it's a free driver free generic um, ASIO driver that uh, is what Behringer recommend for use with this interface um, then these, this is what you should see in these boxes here. And if you're seeing that, then basically you should be, um, you know, working okay. Uh, the problem many people have, uh, I find when I've talked to people about this before is that what they'll do is they'll install Reaper and then they'll install ASIO for all, uh, and their interface. And it can be a bit flighty and a bit, um, a, a bit sketchy trying to get Reaper to pick up the interface. Then I find it's better if you install ASIO for all on your interface, then install Reaper, uh, on top of that. So if you do it in that order, uh, it usually works pretty smoothly. Now, if we go into this, uh, little tab here, ASIO configuration, basically, um, this sets your buffer size and how much um, latency you're going to get. Latency is that thing that happens when you play a note and then a fraction of a second later you actually hear the note coming out of your speakers, which we don't want. There is always going to be a certain amount of latency um, because it takes time for your interface and your computer to um, process the audio that it's hearing. Uh, it's just a question of whether or not it is um, 
you know, uh, noticeable or not. I find if I set the ASIO buffer size to 256 samples, that uh, makes everything run reasonably smoothly although there are one or two kind of little workarounds I have to do and we'll encounter those later so um, that's how I set uh, Reaper up to, to run what we now need to do is we need some plugins first thing I'm going to need for this track are some drums so if I just uh, cycle through to here this is the drum pl plugin that I'm using. It's a free um, drum plugin. Oh, I see there's a new version available. I might have to grab that. But this is MT Power Drum Kit 2 and you can see there is the URL there. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Um, it's a free download, although you do get a nag screen, um, you know, saying please donate something. And because I use it all the time, I give them, I think, you know, five or something like that. And then it's just free forever after that. So once you download it, uh, what happens is you need to install it into um, a directory. And I've just got a little uh, inside the Reaper program files. There's a directory I've created here called VST. And there you can see the MT Power Drum Kit um, DLL, just basically the, the, the two files there that are, you know, what I what, what gives you the drum sounds. Um, you then need to tell Reaper where to look for those files and again if we go into options here and I believe it's in preferences and bring that up and if we just go to VST here um, you can set it to auto detect or you can um, add all of the uh, folders in this dialog here uh, well if we, if we just go into edit you can you can just basically add the the path there you can see um you know there's the one that the uh, drums that, that drum thing is in c program files uh reaper vst so that's you know that and then basically you may need to restart reaper but then it will um just come up with um some all, all, all of your plugins when you when you need to use them so speaking of using plugins the first thing i want to do is to create a drum track for this tune i'm doing here now you've seen me do this before but all you do is uh, um, you you right click somewhere in this area here and you can either insert a new track or multiple tracks but i'm going to insert a virtual instrument on a new track and then these are all of the virtual instruments that I've got as plugins that are in those folders that you saw there. I've got this one. This is a really cool one. Um, this saxophone. It's it's pretty convincing if if used uh, judiciously. But this is the one I'm going to be using here. Uh, MT Power Drum Kit. So I'm just going to OK that, and then we'll get a little dialogue come up uh, in just a moment. Uh, we always get the not responding thing for a minute or two. Uh, there we go. Uh, basically, do I want essentially each part of the drum kit, the snare, the bass drum, the cymbals, the hi-hat and everything on a separate track? You can go that route if you want, but um, I just usually say no. And this is the drum plugin that I use. Uh, now, the... the um, the piece I'm going to be doing here uh, is going to be at 136 beats per minute. So I need to click into that tempo uh, thing there. And uh, where you set the BPM and just type in 136. And there we go. So now if I go into the uh, grooves section of uh, this um, thing here, you can see I've got an intro and you're just going to be hearing these sounds coming down the uh, the vocal mic uh, as I'm doing this. So, you know, don't panic if they don't sound that uh, that fresh. So let's uh, let's see what sort of intros we've got on here. We've got kick and snare. I tend to use this one quite a bit. There we go. So that's like you're counting and a little drum fill. And it'll take you all the way up to a big crescendo here. Once you've set your intro, you've got all of these uh, different types of grooves here you can use. Um, there's uh, basically 
things based on eighth notes on a closed hi-hat so maybe something like this or you know you can get uh, the bell symbol um, you know like that so there's loads of options one thing I find and you know you've got all of these different types of groove down here these are all folders with grooves in and each in each folder there's like thousand well you know how many uh, there's usually about 25 26 grooves in each folder and each groove has you know different variations on fills that you can use there so it's very very versatile one thing I do notice though is that um, You've got three levels of velocity here, uh, soft, normal, and heavy. I just think it always sounds a little bit more human and realistic if you go for the soft option, even if you're recording something that's going to be uh, quite heavy sounding. So those are the drum grooves I'm going to use. The first thing I need, though, is uh, at the start of this tune, there's going to be four bars of strummy chords. So I just need to put like a little kind of... Um, well, accounting at the beginning, I suppose. What you do here, if, if you just kind of drag across on the track, uh, I want a one bar uh, counting. So I just drag across and highlight one bar and go insert new MIDI item. There we go. And because it's a MIDI item, I'll just press escape there to get rid of that, um, that selection. Uh, because it's uh, a MIDI item on this drum track here, it's going to give me some drums, uh, any drums that I want. So I'm just going to double click in this blank MIDI item here, like this. And I know from experience that this uh, key here is the cross stick. And I just want one, two, three, four of those. And I don't want them uh, that loud. So I'm just going to... Uh, hit shift key and click on that and it selects them all and then I can just change the velocities of them down here like this because I don't want it you know too loud so that's going to be more there we go now um, as I say there's going to be four bars of strummy guitar unaccompanied strummy guitar on the beginning of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a three bar midi item there and then in this bar here before the drums start proper i'll put one of those uh intro uh fills in that you saw earlier so once again i've selected three bars and insert new midi item and once again double click into here and basically i want a hi-hat just a hi-hat on beats two and four of each bar so beat two beat four two four like that and just going along here then beat two then beat four like that so i've now got uh those hi-hats in there which are just going to serve to keep me in time and you know i, I could use the built-in metronome um on here but i just think it makes it sound a bit more human if it sounds like there's a drummer just kind of clicking away on a hi-hat uh, just to keep the guitar in time so now let's go into this track here what i want to do is i want to bring that drum kit back so i just click on the effects tab for this track and there's my drum kit because it's it's um it it's sort of seen as an effect that's on the track this midi instrument and i just want one of these uh intros here so i'm just going to use this kick and snare one like this all you got to do is drag it and drop it from the from there and from the drum composer into uh the uh onto the drum track like that and double click in this what i want to do is just try and keep that um that sort of intro that that hi-hat thing that we were talking about a moment ago just reasonably consistent so let's move this up to a hi-hat there we go and a little bit more velocity on that and um, what I've got there is a counting bar I've got my three bars where I'm going to be strumming along then I've got the uh, the intro to the um, you know to the actual tune uh, so let's put some actual drum loops into this now um, so I'm going to go into the eighth 
closed hi-hat. The composite window for this uh, drum plugin is it, al it always defaults to three bars because you tend to find that drummers play three bars of groove and then a one bar fill. So that's what I'm going to do here. And let's just think about, I don't want, because this is relatively up tempo, 136 beats per minute, you don't want anything that's too sort of um, fiddly and detailed. So just a basic groove. That's perfect. Right, so what I'm going to do now is drag that down into this composer window here and then put a fill on the end like that. And then the same loop again and then a different fill on the end of it. And there I've got a three bar groove and a one bar fill and a three bar groove and a one bar fill. That gives me eight bars. That is my first verse. Drums. Done. Okay. So now, what I like to do is to keep it sort of sounding reasonably consistent but varied, I want verse two. So I'm going to use the same uh, drum groove, groove three, this one is that we're using here. But you'll notice I use fills one and two in the previous one. I'm going to, In the previous verse, I'm going to do fills three and four. So I'll put the groove in there and there we go like that and just again drag and drop that up to there and so you can start to see the drum track taking shape counting four bars of strummy guitar uh, first verse second verse and we can now go on and do the chorus in exactly the same way so the the first chorus is basically going to be Eight, well, nine bars long, so because I've got an extra bar on the end. I like to go to the bell symbol for the chorus, and we'll stick with groove three. So the first four bars are going to be a three-bar groove, and then let's go for fill number five here. And because the, uh, as I say, the um, this chorus is nine bars long, so I've got four bars there. What I want is five bars for the rest of it. So I do a four-bar groove. There's my phone pinging there. I should have put that on silent. I do a four-bar groove uh, like this. So I just set this to four bars. There's the groove. And then put another one-bar fill on the end. And that, again, I just drag and drop into there like that. And you can see how easy it is to... Um, to just build up an entire drum track like this. Um, I'll spare you the the, uh, the boredom of watching me do the whole track like this. So what I'll do now is I'll let you hear what this is going to sound like. Uh, by the magic of the edit, you will actually hear this as as I'm hearing it, rather than just it coming down the uh, the vocal mic. So let's hit play and hear what it sounds like. Hi, this is John from the future. Um, after I uploaded this video, there was, of all things, a copyright claim on the uh, that section of drum track that you are currently watching me um, listening to and, and attempting to show you on there. Um, the drums are still present in the final mix. That part wasn't claimed of the video for some reason. Somebody just uh, claimed this programmed drum part as uh, their work for some reason, even though it's clearly visible in the video. I'm using presets from a plugin that you know, you're allowed to use and, and do this kind of thing with, uh, rather than creating any kind of um, hassle and shenanigans, I thought I'd just crop it out, and as I say, you'll hear it later on in the uh, final mix of the tune. Sorry for the inconvenience, chaps. And there you have it. Next thing I'm going to do now is get busy putting the rest of that uh, track's drum part together, and then you'll see me... Uh, putting some bass onto this to start building up the uh, the layers of the track. Okay, as I said, the next thing I need to do is record some bass. So I need uh, a track to record it onto. So all you got to do, there's various ways you can insert a track into Audacity. You can right click here and um, insert a new track. Or as you saw there, uh, maybe on that little uh, dialogue that came up, you can go Control T 
to insert the track or the simplest way to insert the track is just to double click in this area here and it inserts a track so i only need one of those tracks so i'll get rid of a couple of those um and a little bit of housekeeping i'm going to be recording the bass onto this track so uh let's label it as bass there we go right next thing you're going to see is me recording some bass Okay, we've got, as you can see, the full bass track now. You can see the bass and the drums for the whole track in there. First thing I need to do now is to start thinking about putting some rhythm guitar in. And basically what I'm doing here is I want to get a clean sound and a dirty rhythm sound and um, a clean lead sound uh, down. And I'm also wanting a kind of a high gain lead sound. So there's quite a bit of uh, guitar to go on here. So I'm going to start with the clean rhythm guitar. And so I'm just going to right click in here and then there's a track now what I'm going to do is insert three tracks like that okay why three tracks well because I'm going to be doing a little bit of double tracking so um, so why do I need three tracks for double tracking well you'll see so I'm just going to uh, go into here and call this uh, clean chords like that that is now what that track is going to be responsible for and in Reaper what we're going to do is um, what we can do is if we hover down here towards this bottom left hand corner of this track if I click on that you can see how it's indented those two tracks these two tracks are now kind of slave tracks to this parent track here if you like and as I say I'm going to double track so I'm going to uh, pan this uh, track all the way to the left and this track all the way to the right and then I record as near as I can identically the same thing on both tracks and the fact that it isn't going to be identical because you can never reproduce exactly the same thing uh, twice round uh, is what will give it a big stereo sound but I need some kind of amplifier sound on here and this is where um, that one of those little workarounds I was talking around earlier about uh, when we were setting the, the buffer size and the latency that's where I'm going to have to start using one of those so I'm going to go into the effects menu on this track here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this free plugin here this blue cat free amp plugin and that's it and there are various different sounds on here uh, various different kind of uh, factory presets classic clean classic clean comp uh, classic dry that's a pretty good one for uh, a, a, a kind of um, a martial plexi sort of sound really but it doesn't really matter because i'm just going to be using this as like a placeholder sound um the reason i'm doing this is because eventually i'm going to be using uh, i'll set that there as classic clean eventually i'm going to be using a uh, positive grid bias amp on uh, this track here so both of these two tracks are feeding into this track and this track here is the one with the amp sound on it if i use positive grid bias amp on here if i have too many instances of it like i'm probably going to be using it for the rhythm guitar parts and for the dirty rhythm guitar parts and for some of the uh, high gain lead guitar parts then the buffer size remember we set that let's have a look we set the buffer to um where are we 256 uh, samples okay that buffer with bi positive grid bias amp starts to get a little bit cramped and um, the recording gets a bit stuttery and stoppy and starty and it's just it you know it starts to kind of get a bit glitchy and the only way around that is to increase the buffer size all the way up there like that to 2048 samples the problem then is with the buffer all the way up there that's when we get the, uh, the the massive latency where you play a note and then you hear that note like three quarters of a second later just long enough for it to feel a bit discombobulating when you are trying to uh, play in time so the workaround that i do is i keep the buffer size at 256 samples record with like a placeholder amp sound um with that blue cap free amp and then later on when it comes to the mix down i can max the buffer size out and it doesn't really matter because i'm not trying to play along with anything and then i put all of the um the, the more um you know 
demanding plugins in like uh, Biosamp. So that, that's kind of the workaround that I use. Right, so I've got uh, both of these tracks set up now um, to do a, a clean lead guitar part. I'm going to record on the left hand one first, so I enable that to record and um, basically I'll pick up my guitar and start recording. Okay, uh, that's the uh, clean rhythm guitar parts recorded, and as you probably saw in that last clip, I've already added uh, a set of tracks to do the uh, power chords on, uh, just for the crunchy distortion um, kind of rhythm guitar parts in the choruses of the of the tune. Exactly the same process as before. I had three tracks, then I make these two tracks slaves to this parent track here so both of these tracks are going into this one uh this one this uh, track number seven is panned hard left track number eight is panned hard right i'll record the same thing on both of those tracks they are then going into as i say uh, this uh, parent track here where i've got uh blue cat free amp um, installed as an amp sim. Uh, on this setting on the classic drive setting it does a really good impersonation of uh, a crunchy Marshall Plexi um, and I often just use that not just as a placeholder but as a you know a final uh, guitar sound that f features in the uh, in the finished piece so without further ado let's hit record and do the uh, crunchy rhythm guitar parts here we go <laughs> Thank you. 
and there you have it there is pretty much all of the rhythm guitar parts recorded um, I guess it's time to start thinking about the lead guitar parts now okay so what I need to do now is record um, some kind of clean lead guitar part basically um, we're trying to find out if this uh, PRS guitar that you can see I'm using um, lives up to the hype of being able to produce Strat and Les Paul sounds um, so I'm going to go for some sort of nofflery kind of lead guitar part I think uh, for this and uh, you can see I've set up a track here uh, which I've entitled Clean Lead and I'm going to be playing that uh, through um, this preset in guitar rig well certainly to begin with I might change it a little bit later this is just one of the um, in guitar rig you can see you can kind of choose various styles ambient alternative blues classic rock etc etc I've gone for the country setting here and we've got this um, this twin reverb kind of thing here with a bit of compression this control room thing here uh, that's just an impulse response speaker cabinet simulate the sort of thing a bit of a treble booster and a um, little bit of delay on there so you know not really going overboard on effects and uh, yeah I've got a bit of a melody worked out which I'm gonna pick up the guitar and um, try and uh, do this uh, without making a mistake first time for everything I suppose um, so here we go Yeah, I can live with that. Um, so that is giving a, a little bit of a representation of what this guitar sounds like in its sort of Fender guise. Um, now we're going to gird me loins and come up with something that uh, is a little bit more Les Paul-like and high gain for the uh, the big outro solo. Okay, uh, time to record the big outro solo. And uh, what I've done is set up another track here uh, called High Gain Lead and again i'm probably just going to use this as a placeholder sound uh, and maybe replace it with something from uh, bias amp uh, when i do the final mix but sometimes i'll use this depends how i feel about it when i'm finished basically this is the blue cat free amp and i'm also running into that uh, this rather good um tube screamer plugin um by mercurial it's a free download and um well it, you know, it's, you might as well have it. It's free and it does sound incredibly authentic for that um, tube screamer tone. So I'm going to uh, arm this track to record now and um, play some lead guitar. Okay, then here we are once again uh, looking at what we've recorded I've turned the webcam off because um, I basically want you to see the full screen of what I'm doing in Reaper uh, basically I'm just going to show you how I set up a mix I've already got some of it prepared so all I'm going to do now is go control M on the keyboard 
and uh, these are all the tracks here. Uh, we've got the drum track, bass, uh, the clean chords. Remember there was two slave tracks there going into the uh, parent track, panned left and right. Same thing with the power chords. There's the power chords parent track and going left and, you know, recording the two separate tracks, panned left and right and so on and so on. Remember how we did that. Um, so first thing I've done is... Um, I've added another track here with reverb on it. Basically, I've just gone into the effects menu on this track here and I've added reverb, which is just one of the native plugins in Reaper. And I've just got this nice little room reverb setting here. And anything that I want reverb on, I'm going to basically uh, send them any of those tracks through to this track and then onto the master track here. Talking of the master track, I've got a couple of effects on there. Um, a little bit of, again, compression. Uh, I, I, I use the uh, one of the stock settings in this. This is rear comp. This is one of the, the, the stock uh, plugins in Reaper and they have this stock master bus ny comp and then this isn't native to reaper this is a great little free plugin i found uh, called ferox magnetic tape simulator plugin it just warms everything up and gives it a bit more sort of analog warmth um so what i've done is the uh the drum track uh is no longer you can see i've unticked the master send uh, and that's now being sent to track 13 rev or reverb and i've done all of that on uh, done that for all of the tracks that i want to go uh, through this reverb and have reverb added to them uh, you remember i was using for the clean chords i was using uh, the blue cat free amp well i've gone to uh, bias amp for this positive grid bias amp it's going to take a while to load because it is uh, quite resource hungry so we'll just wait for this to uh, wake up and I'll show you what plugin I've used here um, I have a, a few favorite plugins that I use uh, for uh, this and you can see I'm using for clean sounds one of them is this British 900 clean it's basically the um, uh, a Marshall JCM 900 on its clean setting what I've also done if I just come out of the um, out of the the mixer section there I've reconfigured the ASIO drivers or the ASIO buffer so that I've got um, I've maxed out the buffer size now which because I'm going to be using several instances of bias amp it is ridiculously resource hungry uh, so um, that's why um, you know you need uh, a, a big old buffer size there it should run pretty smoothly like that um, the only difference is that like you couldn't record with it maxed out like that because it'd be just too much latency and lag but I'm, I'm done recording so I don't need to worry about that anyway back into the uh, mixing section um, all of these kind of uh, slave tracks that I've got going into these parent tracks I don't need to see those on the mixer because I'm not going to be touching them I'm just going to be adjusting it via the um, via the, the, the parent track so where it says show tracks that are in folders just right click in here show tracks that are in folders just untick that box and now we've got something much more manageable looking you can see the drums and clean chords and power chords and the clean lead and the high gain lead and everything are all going into this reverb track here i'm using bias amp 2 again for for the bass sounds there um still keeping with guitar rig for the uh, the clean lead sound that is like a really great little um patch there let's just remind ourselves what that looks like um Twin reverb setting with a little bit of compression and uh, speaker cab, treble boost and a bit of delay on there. I'm also running that through the uh, through the reverb tank as well because there's no reverb built into that patch there. I know using reverb on everything is slightly uh, out of fashion at the moment. 
Um, you know, Glenn Fricker, for example, doesn't like using reverb on guitars, he often says. But you know what? One of my favourite rock albums is UFO's Obsession. Take a listen, listen to Schenker's guitar on that album. It's absolutely drenched in glorious reverb, so I'm afraid I like it, so I use it. Not, ex- not kind of oppressively or, you know, kind of over the top, but I just like it to sound like it was recorded in a, a nice live room. Anyway, um, the high gain lead, um, I'm using, I was using using the uh, the blue cat free amp for that and once again we'll wait for a positive grid to wake up I'll show you the uh, the setting I'm using for the high gain lead here um, it is uh, another bias amp one and when it wakes up it's taking its sweet time today bias amp is as I say quite resource hungry uh, it's it always wants you to log in a tone cloud uh, in in bias some um it, it's basically that this is the lead guitar sound i'm using it's the monster vh4 preset just the factory preset in bias amp it's uh modeled on a um diesel vh4 amp head and it sounds absolutely incredible it's it's a little bit like um imagine a marshall jtm 45 with gain with a gain control on it that doesn't just go to 11 it goes to 111 it's it's got that real kind of um ballsy marshall sound but you know with, with a load more gain which is fantastic for playing you know big shouty lead guitar parts uh, i'm keeping the blue cap free amp for the um for the, the the power chord part and i've got as you can see that where the faders are here i've got a bit of a rough mix set up um just by start i usually start with uh the uh, drums and bass soloed get those in there then start adding things um you know, like clean chords power chords and so on um and tweaking the levels until i've got a until i can kind of hear everything you know where this thing isn't too loud and that thing isn't too quiet basically that's all mixing comes down to really in in, in its uh, essence um what i want to do now is start committing some of this mix to um you know uh, memory if you like or or you know kind of automating it so i'm going to go into this little menu here where it's uh well, I can set me envelopes basically, uh, and I'm just going to go right and record fader positions to armed envelopes like that. And basically, now any adjustments that I make on these faders will be, you know, kind of remembered by Reaper. So let's go to the start of the project and hit play, which is just the space bar on the keyboard, and let's see how it's sounding. And you know what? Uh, I think I can say I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, that is, you know, it's it's a nice little mix. It 
it'll serve the purpose for demonstrating this guitar you know you can go overboard and go to town with it but um that is something that as i say uh, i'm going to call finished now well almost there's um there's one other little trick i'm going to share with you for making the whole thing sound really big and fat and just gargantuan and large so um i'll be back in a moment and show you what i'm doing there Okay, I've rendered the uh, that mix down to a WAV file. Dead easy to do in Reaper. All you have to do is go File and Render, and then choose what you're going to call it and where you're going to uh, export it to. And as you can see, this is the folder that this has gone to. Um, Documents, Reaper Media, PRS, SE, Custom 24, the project folder that we were working from. Um, so what I'm going to do now is show you that little dodge for making the mix sound big and fat and enormous. Uh, and for that, we need the assistance of Audacity. Um, so I have um, basically all WAV files on my computer set to open in Audacity by default. So let's just double click there and you can see it's launching Audacity and importing that WAV file. There it is. <clears throat> now you can see it's not a very loud mix looking at the waveform there. Um, you know, we're going to fix that. Um, you can mix it louder in, in Reaper, but I like to do it this way because um, it's, it just guarantees that you're not going to get any clipping or anything. Uh, the first thing I like to do for something like this is just take off the uh, counting on the beginning. So I'm just going to uh, highlight that. And then if you go into the effect menu in Audacity and choose Amplify and just take it all the way down to minus 50 it's actually minus infinity it it completely silences anything that you do that to as you can see there right so that's got rid of the counting just makes it sound a little bit more professional without that one two three four click on the beginning uh, now i'm going to select the whole track and this is a bit bizarre what i'm going to do do now uh, select the whole track go into the effects menu and i'm going to choose distortion why would I want to put distortion on this? Well, I'm not going to make it distorted. I'm just going to do um, a little trick that I've I learned by accident. In the distortion um, kind of dialogue there, you can see that one of the options is soft overdrive. It's not going to add overdrive. Don't panic. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Before I do that, I'll just zoom out so you can see what happens to the entire waveform right so we're going to go into there as i said distortion and we're going to choose soft overdrive now look what happens to the waveform when i apply that it just gets fatter um it take it tames all of the peaks down it acts almost like a like a compressor or a leveler um but it just kind of makes things sound fatter and that then gives me the scope because i haven't got any big peaks sticking up that are going to kind of go into clipping if i now amplify that go into the amplify uh, into the effects menu again and amplify this and in audacity unless you tick this allow clipping box and why would you do that um it works out the maximum amount of decibels it can amplify it by uh to um you know to give you the most volume for it and uh, just hit ok and there we go we now have a big fat sounding mix and um well i'll tell you what let's have a listen to it
so that's what doing that little dodge does to it i'm just going to um export that uh, export as wav and um yeah i just have this working process folder here so i'm just going to export to there and there we go it's just exporting now and that is pretty much the end of how i uh, mix a track i'll tell you what we'll do um let's undo those um steps there where we uh, made it all sound nice and big and uh, let's have a listen to you know that you've just heard the after let's hear the before Yeah, we won't go all the way through, but I think you can hear uh, the difference there. It hasn't just made it louder by doing that. It actually makes it um, big and chunky and fat sounding. It, I used to use uh, an online mastering service called Lander, L-A-N-D-R. And um, I just found that I could get exactly, pretty much exactly the same results by doing this little dodge in Audacity and it doesn't cost anything lander does so there you go that is pretty much how i record and mix and put a track together um hope you found this useful so there you go that's pretty much how i do it as i say if i'm doing anything wrong or giving bad advice i do apologize profusely but that is the way that i do it and it seems to work for me and i hope you found found at least some of it helpful uh, for my wonderful wonderful patreon supporters i'm going to put that video uh, of the whole thing from start to finish uh, from you know d basically setting reaper up and doing the drums all the way through to the finish mix that entire clip that you've just seen there is up on my patreon page there's the address and the link is in the description it's only three dollars or two pound fifty a month and you get all of these additional resources that go along with these youtube lessons um I will also put up the entire Reaper project up there, so, you know, if you have Reaper, uh, you can, you know, try opening the project and, you know, having a look at how I've done things, having a look under the bonnet, basically, or under the hood, uh, if you if you prefer. Uh, you may need to uh, grab one or two other plugins, like if you don't have Guitar Rig or Bias Amp or something like that. Um, go and grab that, um, you know, Blue Cat Free Amp. Um, um, I've done a few projects where I've used that and nothing but that so that's a great little resource as well and if you don't have Reaper then again I'll put the link to that in the description it's uh, free to evaluate for 60 days and then it's something you know ridiculously cheap like 60 quid to buy a license it is and it's a great piece of software and I would be absolutely lost without it and that is the rather long video for today folks hope you've enjoyed it found it useful informative um not too misleading hopefully if i've given any any bad advice out there uh, it wasn't intentional so please accept my apologies if that's the case but anyway if you've enjoyed the video please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and don't forget the live stream friday 5 p.m uk time uh where we talk about guitars and music and drink beer it's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend and i would love to see you there if you can make it uh but for now i'll so that's pretty much it for today um thank you so much for watching and thank you for your time look after yourselves folks and stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now